In this video, I'm going to take you through a complete beginner's tutorial on how to edit 360 footage with your GoPro Max camera. So I recently got back from a trip from Wales where we rode at Dovey Bike Park and got some awesome shots, some really cool point of view videos. And I wanted to walk you through my editing workflow in GoPro's desktop app to show you the ins and outs of how the app works and how you can create some really cool point of view footage. So I'm going to jump over to my computer do a screen share, take you through everything and show you how to get the most out of this camera. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using GoPro Player, which is GoPro's in-house app. They have a mobile version of this, but in this video, we're just going to focus on the desktop version because I think there's actually more customization inside the desktop app as compared to the phone app. The phone's great if you just want to whip something quick together for social media, but if you want a little bit more hands-on and you want to be able to tweak your footage a little bit more, then I really do prefer the desktop app to the mobile app. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that you've already got 360 footage off your camera and what we're going to do is we're going to open that 360 footage in GoPro's player. So I'm going to open media and I'm just going to open you a video that I shot and I'm going to show you my editing workflow. So I'm going to open it up and as you can see it looks <laughs> random to start with. So just to give you guys some context I actually have the camera mounted to the chin of my full face helmet with something that's called a Nartec mount. I'll put a link in the description for that if you want it and to grab yourself a discount. But this is the first screen that we're gonna be met with, so don't be alarmed by it. And this is basically how simple GoPro's app is. It's, there's not really much going on the screen, but the simplicity is where it comes in handy. So what we're gonna do is, we are first of all going to turn the camera around, and all I'm doing now is dragging the mouse on my um, trackpad and we're going to just center up where we want to start this clip and for this video I'm going to assume we're making a video for Instagram so we want it that portrait style vertical video view and for that we're going to be setting our aspect ratio up in 9 by 16 so that is going to give us like perfect things for reels and stories I'm going to click this button at the bottom here <coughs> which is our reframe button or our keyframe button and it's going to add a keyframe so we're gonna get roughly where we want our keyframe to start. And the top right in here, you'll see all the aspirations we choose from. We're gonna go nine by 16, and you'll see it instantly adjusts it, ready for social media or wherever you wanna use it. You can click on the trackpad and drag around and you can play around with it. And if you hold the command button on a Mac, you can actually click and drag and rotate it around. If you hold the option button, that'll zoom in and out control button will move it up and down like this and um, if you click on the keyframe button it'll bring this little pencil icon if you click it again you can add lens correction so you notice here this actually adds a little bit of distortion I actually like a little bit of distortion in my videos I think it brings that speed element in which is what I want people to experience especially with something like action spots like mountain biking if you are just filming stuff, say, on a selfie stick and you're walking around a park and there isn't really that much action going on, you may not want lens correction, but this is just going to be personal preference and something you want to play around with. But for me, I usually go with around 45 on the lens correction. That kind of gives me enough distortion that it feels realistic. If you go any more than that, it starts to get, like, trippy and, like, that doesn't look very appetizing to watch to me. So I just keep it about 45. And we've got our start keyframe. And then we're going to click the space bar, play the button, and we're going to see where the next keyframe is going to be. Okay? So, you'll see it starts playing. And this is a, a new mountain bike track at W Bike Park, real cool. You can see here, so we're riding a mountain bike track that's got loads of twists and turns. And the idea, or the goal, of what we're trying to do with the editing is to make the camera follow the motion of my handlebars or down the trail so it looks more realistic if we just leave it like this it will start looking a little bit out of frame and the camera won't be pointing where we want it to point so we want to move the camera with the motion of my bike and the way we do that when it comes to a mountain bike position if the track is straight and there isn't much action going on you just leave the thing as it is you don't need a keyframe as soon as you're coming up to a point on the trail or a point in your video where there is a change in direction this is where you want another keyframe because it's signaling to the app that is where you want the next action to go so what we'll do is 
We'll put another keyframe here. And what we'll do is we'll straighten the camera angle a little bit by holding the command button. We'll take it around a bit. And then we'll come around out the corner and we'll add another keyframe here and we'll just reposition the camera slightly here. And then we'll go to the end of this next corner and you'll see we want the camera to be pointing down the track. So all I'm doing now is rotating with my hand and I'm using the trackpad and the command button to align my shot. So if we go with that, and you'll notice now, what the camera will do when I play it, it will move between the keyframes. So wherever this second position is in the keyframe, from the first keyframe, it will slowly move towards the next keyframe. I'll show you now. See you, guys a bit. you can see the camera starting to move slowly. There we go, you can see it moving if you watch closely. I'm happy with that. And then we'll do the same again. So here, keyframe, out the corner, we want something else. We'll play this bit again, show you again how this looks. You can see it's starting to look quite realistic. Now one thing I've actually learned with editing GoPro footage like this is that the less keyframes that you use, the better. Because the more you add in, it's just adding more movement to the camera and they become really obvious as a viewer. As you can, you're probably able to see here. See, we've got three quite close together. Watch, watch the camera between the three movements and you'll see there's a little bit of a movement, watch. There, do you see it? Tiny movement, which I'm not really a big fan of. What we could do is we could see if we can get rid of that. Let's try and get rid of this keyframe. And let's see if this makes any different. So it's a little bit smoother. This is looking good. Okay. So this is how I would usually edit my 360 footage for mountain bike. And there's another thing that I want to talk about here, which is the transitions between the keyframes. Because obviously there's a number of different things we can do here. So we have all these different options here, which have just popped up and we can choose to ease between the two keyframes, which will give you a smoother move between keyframes, or we can jump cut. So it would literally be a really fast movement. I'll show you now. So we'll just play this and I'll show you what the jump cut looks like. You see that it just literally jumps, which isn't really what we want. So I tend to use ease both. This basic, and you can click apply to all So every keyframe you add to your video, it adds the ease both option. So it just takes a lot of time. If you watch here though, there's a lot smoother transitions between the keyframes. And I quite like that. And what we can also do as well, we can add some motion blur if you want. You can click motion blur here, add some motion blur to each of the keyframes. So update them all. And we can even click enable motion blur on all transaction transitions. So look at this and see what this looks like. So again, this will give you that speed aspect a bit more. And for some reason it's gone into 16 by nine. Sometimes the motion blur actually, I'm not a big fan of in some scenarios because it adds too much distortion. And you've got to remember as well, when you're editing on this app, it is in a low resolution preview. So motion blur, for example, you will see a lot better and a lot finer detail when you export your video. So just know that. So when you're editing now, it actually will look a lot better quality when you export things. So you're gonna work all the way through your clip and then it's gonna be time to export your video. So I'm just gonna add another keyframe just to round this out. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna trim this video using the scissor icon here so we can trim it. So say for example, you only wanted like a 15 second clip out of a minute or a two minute clip. You can trim it just that length like this. Real simple click and drag. And it will highlight the trim section. And that's the section you're gonna be working on. I would only trim a section of video once you are happy with the section you wanna use and you're ready to export it. 
There are some other buttons at the bottom of here. We can do freeze time mode and we can do grab a photo. So if you want to grab a JPEG photo from your camera, then your GoPro will do that. And how do we go back to my video? I don't actually use this too much. Oh, don't want to close it, there we go. So, okay. So let's say now we've got our video ready to go and we're ready to export it. There's a couple of key things we're gonna do here. Because our goal is to upload this video to social media, like Instagram, TikTok, maybe YouTube Shorts, there's a couple of things that I like to do to export it. We go up here to export. Don't just click next here. Click on advanced options. And I always like to upload, well, I used to actually upscale my resolution to 4K, just so then we've got the highest quality video possible from the source. And then I always go to H.264 as the codec, because that's just like the user-friendly codec that Instagram and other social media platforms use. And I find it a lot better. And then bitrate, I actually usually just go in the middle. And I always turn this mount optimization on, so it just, where the stitch line is in your camera, where there's no lens, it does just does a it tries to do a better job to line all the footage up so you, see, you don't see that as much in your video. We click next, I'm gonna give it a title, test video one. I'm gonna save it and you'll see here, top right hand corner, it'll be exporting. And then once it is exported, you should have a video that is literally ready to upload to your social media if that's what you wanna do with it. Or you could upload, export it as a 16 by nine for YouTube or whatever you wanna do with it. That's a basic overview, a beginner's tutorial on how to edit your GoPro Max footage. Hope it was useful. If you have any questions, pop them below and I'll get back to you. See you in the next one.